All right, how is it going? Today I'm having a look at the Apart Agency site of the day. Specifically, I want to look at this uh, scroll section that they have here with these cars that kind of line up. If I scroll down a little on the outer container, you can see they stack up on the bottom here and then go up to the top. And then when they're done, you scroll on to the next section of the page. So I'm going to show you how to build this in Webflow first, and then we will get to the GSAP code. Check it out. Hey there, WebBay. Okay, here's my implementation of it. So same thing, we got all these things stacking up down here. And as we're scrolling, they're coming up to the top. You're revealing some text, you're revealing the image, and we're changing the height of this thing from zero to 100%. So let's hop into Webflow now and see how it's built. Here I am in Webflow. The main thing we wanna see, so we're connecting this up to the CMS. Um, the difficulty you're gonna have here is that we need to manipulate the DOM for this to work. Now, the reason this is, so we've got our normal, okay, section tabs come in here, position relative. We've got our tab wrap. This is position sticky, so it's sticking to the top of section tabs as we scroll. And then I've got a height of 100 viewport height units there. And I'm just set over, setting overflow to hidden so that it looks okay in our Webflow project. Otherwise, it's just gonna overflow its content. So set that back to hidden. And if we look at the tab list, this has a height of 100% of its parent, which again is 100 viewport heights. Section tabs, I want to be something like 500 viewport heights, but I'm actually gonna set this programmatically, so we'll see that. Now down in tab item, I have width of 100%, I have no height, but I have a direction uh, vertical on the flex box here. And so essentially what we're doing, I'm gonna hop over to some theory real quick just to show you, is we have all these heading divs, and in the middle of that, we're gonna have a content example. And this thing is gonna scale from 0% to 100. So we're essentially animating this thing from zero to 100. Now you can see, like once it gets over 70% or I guess 80% of its parent height, it has no more room to grow. And But it, Flexbox is smart and it really knows that. So we're just gonna animate from zero to 100% because that's gonna get us the effect that we want. And now you'll see if we added say more CMS items in this case represented by this div called box with a heading in it. So I'll duplicate some here at the top and you can see that they're just showing up here and the content example div is flexing to the size and I can duplicate some at the bottom here. Now, what's interesting is that we have our flex container here and then all of our divs are all siblings of each other. This is troublesome back here in home because let me expand this thing. We have this tab item div right here. So what we want is we want our tab items to be the flex elements, the flex elements or the flex children and tab list to be our flex box. But we know that in Webflow, this has to be here. And so what we're gonna do programmatically is we're actually gonna take this tab content and bring it outside of tab item so that it's sibling. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Let's finish up with the Webflow project here. Tab top is pretty much just its own div and you can put whatever you want in here. I just have a heading. You could put some stuff over to the right, like a category. And then tab content is flex box as well width of 100%, height of 100%, overflow set to hidden, and position relative. And this is just doing my layout with the text on the left here and the image on the right. I have the image set to cover and to take up the space of its own div. All right, so I will just collapse those. And then I have some data attributes on some of our items here. The first one is on section tabs. So I have this WB element equals sticky tabs scroll section. And then on the tab item, I have WB element equals sticky tabs item. And lastly, on the tab content div, I have WB element equals sticky tabs content. Now in the page settings, I'm loading inside the head tag GSAP, GSAP scroll trigger, and I'm just loading from my local machine some code. Once I upload this as a clonable, I'll stick the code down here in the before closing body tag. That's it for the Webflow project. Let's hop into code to see how to make this work. All right, so here in the code, we can see at the top here, I'm just defining some constants, and these are getting the names of the first part of the data attribute and the second part of the data attribute. Anytime I'm referring to the second part, I'm using this value syntax, and the first part is the name. And you'll see this come into play right as we start off our code. So we're waiting for Webflow to be ready with this code here, and we're just gonna write our code inside of these two pink curly brackets. First thing I wanna do is I wanna get references to all of those items that we added data attributes for. So the first one is the tab items, and we're gonna use the document.querySelector all method for that. And the CSS selector that we're gonna pass is this string with open and close brackets on either end, 
And then we have the dollar sign, open, close, curly braces. This is to inject our variables into this string. So we have the attribute name equals the attribute value. And this should look very similar to how we wrote it in Webflow, right? Similarly to how we got tab items, I'm also gonna get the tab content elements and the scroll section. Now, the very first thing I wanna do is I wanna set the scroll section height to be a multiple times 100 of the number of CMS items that we have. So in this case, we have five CMS items, so I want the height to be 500 viewport heights. And to do that, all I have to do is say scroll section dot style dot height equals, and then I'm using this template literal syntax again, or string syntax to say, I wanna do 100 times our tab items list up here dot length, so we're getting the length of it, and we'll tack on this VH or viewport heights to the end of the string. And that will make our section there 500 viewport heights. If we added CMS items later to have six or seven, it would go to 600 and then 700. Next, we're gonna manipulate the DOM such that each content div is a sibling of its corresponding CMS item div, which allows us to utilize Flexbox on the CMS list. This is exactly what I was going over with the Flexbox demo. So this is allowing us to use the power of Flexbox and Webflow CMS at the same time. Now Webflow CMS, like I said, unfortunately chucks that little item container in there, but we need to make sure that our content div is sibling to that. So to do that, we're gonna loop through each tab item and this for each function takes another function as a parameter and that function by itself gets the item as well as the individual index. So this is gonna go zero, one, two, three, four, and it's gonna get us each individual item within that CMS list. And we're gonna write our code in between these open and close curly brackets here. So just return there. And then I'm gonna call this insert adjacent item method that exists on our item. And I'm gonna give it two parameters. The first is where it goes. And I wanna say, give it the string of after n. So if I hold over here, we can see insert adjacent element has the first parameter of where and also the element itself. And for the element that we wanna pass, we're gonna pass our content tab content elements which is what we grabbed up here and pass the index so that we're making sure that this index matches the index for the tab item. Hope that makes sense. If I save this and I'm, let's see, I'm serving and I come back to our Webflow project and I run, it's not gonna work, but if I open up the inspector here and zoom in a little so you can actually see some stuff and I look at the elements, let's inspect. So I wanna to get to, yeah, so we can see our list. So this is the collection list. And then we have our first item. And right under that as a sibling is the content. If I open up the item, you can see all we have in there is tab top, which is different from in our Webflow project. We have our tab item, and then we have tab content as a child of tab item. So our code is working to make tab content a sibling to our tab item. Let's get back to the code. Next thing I'm gonna do is create a GSAP timeline. And the GSAP timeline is taking an object right here. And the first property of that object I'm gonna specify is scroll trigger. Now you notice that I registered scroll trigger up here with the gsap.register plugin function. Scroll trigger has its own object and we're gonna give it a property of trigger, which we're setting to our scroll section that we got up above already. It's gonna take a start and we'll pass that a string of top top. So this means, hey, scroll trigger, you start when the top of the scroll section is at the top of the viewport. And it's gonna take an end, and we wanna say that the end is when the bottom of scroll section is at the bottom of our viewport. So essentially when the user has scrolled through that whole 500 viewport height div. And then lastly, we can set this scrub parameter to one. You can set this as a number or the value true. When you set it to one, it means it lags a little bit. So it's like a smoothing effect. It takes one second to catch up. And then I'm gonna set the default ease to none. Next, we wanna set all content elements heights to zero and our first one to 100% so that everything, all the tabs are stacked and crunched at the bottom, but our first one will be expanded. So I'll just call gsap.set and pass tab content elements. This is passing all of them and setting all of their heights to zero. And then right after that, we'll set the first one at index zero here to a height of 100%. Now we're gonna go ahead and loop through every tab content elements up till the very last one, uh, or the one before the last one, so the penultimate, that's a SAT vocabulary word for you. And we're gonna do some timeline stuff to those. Again, using that timeline that we specified up here. And our code is gonna go right in between these curly brackets here. So at the same time, set the current tab height to zero and the next tab height to 100%. 
And so we'll call timeline.2 and we'll pass tab content elements of i, so the first one in our loop, and we'll set its height equal to 0%. So for our very first one, we've already set height of 0 to 100%. So we're calling our first timeline action to set tab content elements of 0 to 0%. And at the same time, we're going to say that we want tab content elements of 1, so the next one in our tab content elements node list, to a height of 100%. And we're going to pass this little less than sign syntax to make it happen at the exact same time as this two statement up here. Since we're in a loop, it's going to happen for the zeroth item, for the first item, for the second item, for the third item. And let's see, three, we know tab content elements dot length is five. So minus one is four. So this is going to go up to three. And this here is going to be four. And that way we're going to avoid overflowing the last index of our array. So I'll go ahead and save this and now refresh my project. And we can see I've got sticky scroll tabs all linked to the CMS. Scrolling very smoothly, looking great. We've got images, we've got text in there, and we're going to our next section. Thank you so much for watching. If you found that helpful, please consider subscribing. It helps me out a ton and check all the stuff in the description below and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>